My name is Ellen Schifrin, and I have a story to tell. I was in a cult for almost 10 years. I was in search of a teacher, of a spiritual teacher, and I finally found a fellow by the name of Andrew Cohen. He was a new, dynamic, uh, charismatic, American fellow who had been in India and who had theoretically become enlightened. And uh, lo and behold, we found that this was not the situation at all. I was smitten with Andrew. I thought he was fabulous. I thought he made a lot of sense. And I became what's called a formal student. Andrew had centers in Toronto, New York, Marin County, London, Amsterdam, and Munich. So Toronto became one of the centers. When he'd get together with the formal students for kind of just a hangout, he would start to talk about other students from other places negatively. He would say how you know lame they were or lazy or it was just somehow it was startling. I felt it was really strange and then I thought well look he's the guru he's doing what he thinks he should do and who am I to ask that question. So within a couple of more years, I had not moved to Andrew's community in Western Massachusetts called Fox Hollow, but we had been going back and forth, the Toronto group, because it was not that long a ride. There I met some other students. What I learned from them was a very peculiar thing, and that is that their children didn't like Andrew. They'd crawl kind of like around Andrew. They wouldn't pass him by. They'd kind of move away from him. And I thought, hmm, that's definitely a red flag. So nonetheless, I stayed with Andrew and uh, began to be more and more involved. In 1997, I quit my really satisfying job at Humber College teaching movement and dance to theater students. It couldn't have been much better than that and became, over time, an unhappy student, along with others, uh, at Fox Hollow. After some time, I began to see uh, people who would flee in the middle of the night because they were under so much stress. Um, and other people were given uh, punishments, like you should buy Andrew a big bouquet of flowers or some expensive clothes or other types of very materialistic things that we were to do for him. So this was another big red flag. I had never heard of any teacher anywhere asking their student to do that. One day we'd be doing well and the next day we'd be doing terribly and we really didn't know why. So in the mid-90s in Bodh Gaya in India, there was, Andrew held retreats there, and um, he made a decision that, that prostrations would be a good practice for some of us. Uh, not that we were necessarily not doing well, but we could do better. He had us kind of like go from zero to 100 miles an hour in a few seconds. And I thought, as my body is like in tatters. I thought, this man doesn't know what he's doing. So that's when I realized this next red flag that he really didn't know everything like he pretends he knows. Nonetheless, I still stayed. <laughs> As a punishment for the women who were theoretically not doing very well en masse, um, he had us do prostrations in the lake. 
a number of us the first time left without doing uh, all of them. And so we were punished by having to do it again. And so we did it again. And then still some of us, and I was, I was one of them, I, I've never been good with cold. And at the end of each of these, I literally had to be dragged and carried back to my living quarters and kind of thrown into a warm shower. So uh, I wound up doing it three times all together and then there was a smaller group of us and we kind of helped each other through it. And uh, so that was a big red flag. And again, I stayed. A couple of years later, we were subjected to the last, for me, red flag, which was uh, a series of very misogynistic cartoons about all the women in the community. There was a young fellow who was an artist and Andrew had him draw these cartoons that were really unbearable. And uh, when I was say, I spared for, uh, you know, at least a few weeks, and then there I was, and I just said, I can't, I just, I can't do it anymore. I just felt like that was the last straw. And that was a huge, I mean, the red flags were totally in my face at that point, and I left. And uh, later I came back. I came back in uh, 2002 by starting with the weekly groups in New York, and I just thought I'd come and meditate and listen to a tape and it'll be nice. That was a big mistake. Why did I come back? Why was I so gullible all those years? I don't really know. But what we do know about this situation is that when you're brainwashed, when you've been in a cult for 10 years, it takes time to recover from that. Because Andrew is still teaching, I really want to let people know that this is a man who is not a teacher. He's a pretender. He's a narcissist. He's a, a mean human being who enjoys uh, being horrible to other people. He's too full of the need for adoration, for it being all about him and not about his students even though that's not what he says. In some of the pictures that you've probably seen, you'll see a bunch of happy-looking people. We were not happy, but we had to pretend that we were happy. And some of us thought we were happy. And so I encourage you to read this blog and to take it seriously, because a lot of people have suffered a lot for a long time.